Hello everyone. Today, I'll be presenting our project, Scopium. Expand the scope of your code base. So what we are aiming to do is to use the power of GraphRack to build a productivity tool for developers who deal with large code bases. So what are the current problems with it? Well, an, en an enterprise or an open source code base can easily exceed 100,000 lines and it can easily get messy to understand what is going on because of the dependencies. When we use Copilot or any LLM tool, it has a context window bottleneck that does not allow for passing the entire code base. In such cases, understanding and debugging a file becomes a nightmare. So our solution? What if we could chunk up our code base and capture it within a graph? That way, we can retrieve only the relevant context for our query, leaving out unnecessary codes. Basically, we can maximize the information by minimizing the redundant code passed to the LLM. So how does it work? So as you can see, the goal of this project would be to convert this given directory format to a depiction of the graph, where each node consists of the code snippets, whereas the edges hold the relationship between these nodes. So on screen, you can see how a typical node structure would look, would look like and how an edge structure would look like. The node structure has a type which holds the kind of symbol it is or like a function or a class what it is and you can see all the relevant information within that as well. There's line number, code snippet, start line and end line. And there's edge structure which holds, which holds the source and target nodes. At the same time it holds the context for it as well. So now let us look at how the processing takes place. So first we have the contains directory which recursively finds and stores the directory and subdirectory information. And now within the contains directory, there's also contains file, which does the same thing, but for files. Then we have contains snippet, which chunks up code into snippets set by arbitrary values needed for efficient chunking. So it defines, defines the node schema for each node. And the symbol nodes hold code details such as function, class, etc. So the import captures import relationships, whereas references captures implicit inputs, which is a key feature required. So here is an over, overall workflow of how the chunking process take place, takes place throughout the code base. So now, how is this possible for thousands of nodes? Typically, it goes, it can go between 2,000 to even 10,000 nodes, and edges are even more than that. So it is possible through the ArangoDB NetworkX and NVIDIA's KuGraphs uh, tech stack. So with KuGraphs, we have the CUDA support, which enables for GPU execution of node chunking and storing. So this is our entire tech stack. So we have a backend flask, front end react, and uh, Mr. AI is the LLM that we are using for our model. Along with that, we have our AngoDB, NetworkX, and NVIDIA, cool graphs. So why our AngoDB and networking is perfect for this? AQL makes it easy to traverse, enough abstraction for EC implementations, so with AQL queries, it is possible for a very complex traverses to be done through few lines of code. And CUDA usage speeds up node and edge processing. So at the moment, what languages do we support within the system? We have Python, C++, Java, and Golang support. So any code base with these languages will execute flawlessly. So how to run our model? So here is a link to our readme file which explains in detail how you yourself can execute this on your local system. Thank you for your time. And now we'll move on to the actual execution of our code. Three, two, one. Okay, now let's take it for a test drive. So here you have search repositories option. So let's say I'm searching for Flask repository. So what it does is it queries to GitHub itself and finds a list of public repositories matching your query. Essentially, you can talk to any public repository. So let's say I'm choosing Flask and I type a very particular function. What is the use of has level handler in the code base? Yes. Great. Let's look at this result. So it has found has level handler 
It has given us function definition, implementation, usage pattern, and the surrounding code snippet as well. How cool is that? So now let us go. Let us look into another uh, repository. Let's say Keploid. Now this one is written in Golang. So let us search. So we have Golang. And now let us ask it a query. Like let's be a bit more abstract this time. Let's ask it. Can you explain how eBPF is implemented within this code base? How? Now we have the result. How great is this? It's giving us key findings, which is kernel version check, file code snippet, eBPF hooks, eBPF structure and maps, eBPF objects. Keep in mind, eBPF is, in, is a concept and we're getting how it is implemented directly within the code base. So we've gone through a complete demonstration of this product and how it can be useful. And if you want to give it a shot, please refer to this readme file well, it has all the details on how you can execute it yourself. Thank you for your time.